Howdy folks, welcome to Dojo Talks. We are recording an emergency episode tonight uh, in light of the big news that was announced today uh, via Twitter, and that is chess.com um, essentially buying Play Magnus Group and all of the uh, all of the many companies that Play Magnus owns, all of the subsidiaries, um, which include sites like Chess24 and Chessable. Um, and new in chess and aimchess.com and I think uh, gchess.com as well, uh, Simon's site. Um, so yeah, just buying the entire, including like the Play Magnus app and, and all those parts as well. Um, so huge, huge purchase. And um, we're here to uh, discuss. Um, apparently the, the sum was somewhere in the range of like 80 million that they paid, which actually to me was a surprisingly high figure for like any chess company. Okay. Um, which yeah, I mean, transactions like this, just to be clear, like transactions like this take a while, right? So there's like, they've already been working on it for a couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. And there's like several more weeks to go before they would actually, you know, move money and sign papers and yeah, and, and merge and so forth. So not official for another 68 weeks. But mainly, yeah. David, what I want to know is what did you know? And when? <laughs> Because you made it sound like you kind of saw this announcement coming, but you weren't able to say anything. Yeah, it would have been illegal for me to talk about it before the transaction happened. That would have been like, a, you know, the kind of thing a senator or a congressperson would do in this country. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, it goes by insider trading, uh, basically. So, I mean, not uh, insider trading if I trade, but if I say anything, other people could make trades based on what I said. So, um, yeah. Yeah, so I I knew that there were ongoing talks. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh so what's your uh feeling on this? Um <laughs> Actually <laughs> now that we've reached this point, I, <laughs> that's a big open question. And I'm kind of scared to say some of the things I might have to say. Um, you're not going to post this on YouTube, are you, Kosia? The plan think, was to post it on YouTube. Well, yeah, no, I mean, I think it's going on YouTube. And <laughs> you don't have to say anything you might regret saying, you know. But uh, yeah, I mean, there's so many different parts to talk about. But um, what do I think of it? I mean, I can like, I can answer in two words, some of the big questions and we can go back through them later. Like, I think that it's not that, that it, in some major way, it's not a good thing for the chess community to have less uh, chess companies in it. Mm -hmm. um, that goes also for when Play Magnus was acquiring the companies that turned it from Play Magnus into like the Play Magnus group. Right. Um, I didn't think it was a good thing for them to be acquiring companies um there are positives as well so it's not just negatives and we can get into more detail but like broad picture i don't think it's good for the chess world for it to sort of condense um another big question is does chess.com now have a monopoly i think no for mm, for more than one reason some people are like maybe lee chess um i think that um youtube and twitch are also um, direct competitors with chess.com right now, although it's not clear to me that chess.com realizes that. <laughs> but but that's my personal uh, analysis of this. Kosti, we might get to talk some business today so we can... No, I, I think that's where this is, <laughs> this is yeah. headed. Um, we, we can talk, you know, markets and market share and what's a competitor and what's a partner and all that. Yeah. Um, no, it's very interesting. You can people what you learned in business school. Right. No, I mean, I, I don't, because see, I have like zero experience in the business world. So I don't really consider myself to have um, any, any real knowledge of uh, business stuff. Um, right. I'm always just giving my take here mainly as like a chess professional, chess player, chess teacher, how I think it will affect the, uh, yeah. the chess world. Um, yeah. To me, I mean, it does and seem I, like they took. And, and yeah, I'm like ahead. the opposite. I've never been to business school, but I don't think there's much to be learned there. I have worked in the chess business and I think that I've learned some things just by by working, which is how I think I tend to learn. And I think a lot of people can learn more by by working. 
yeah no definitely in studying uh yeah but. like the real world experience is um is where it's at um so look to me it does feel like they they just took a major step towards being um a monopoly mm -hmm. and uh, i don't think it's the worst thing in the world i don't think monopolies are great um in general but yeah if you look back uh just a few months ago and you asked like okay who are chess.com's like biggest competitors you'd say like chess 24 or chessable maybe one or two other sites like in terms of uh paying users right, right. chess is not really on the same level in terms of like having like a, a, a paid offering um and so if you ask like yeah what happens if chess.com now swallows chess24.com and chessable in one fell swoop and yeah. acquires like a bunch of other stuff then it's like wow <laughs> that's that's just yeah. huge. That's just taking out like the number two and number three, like, uh, um, companies. Right. Um, so here's why I would say that, that Lee chess is a competitor, even though they're not charging people, they're providing a similar service to the same, to people in the same marketplace. They're just yeah. pricing it at zero. So I think if they can satisfy a chess.com customer, um, and keep that customer from buying a product on chess.com or using a service on chess.com, then they're a competitor. There's definitely lots of people who just get all of their chess needs from Lee Chess and are doing absolutely fine. And I don't yeah. think they're missing anything particularly special. Um, but uh, yeah, I don't know. Just like from, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know what kind of standpoint, but it's, it's not like Lee Chess is running like the Meltwater chess tour or anything like that like like actual right. events that com compete with chess.com events and like this whole thing right so it's important to realize chess.com provides a variety of services and lee chess yeah. is a competitor for some of those things but not for all of them and youtube is a competitor for some of those things but not all of them you can't go on to youtube and play a blitz game as far as i know right so it, it's a competitor for some parts it's actually a competitor for parts that lee chess isn't a competitor for so lee chess is a competitor for the playing experience but it doesn't compete with chess.com on learning materials, as far as I know, and on um, like events and entertainment, right? It's yeah. basically just like a great interface for playing and like storing and sharing chess materials. Well, the, but it the doesn't studies have are like good. really professional um, content and events at the same level. I know they run like a yeah. titled arena and sometimes you know, Dr. Drunkenstein will like show up. So it's not like they don't have good players. They don't have events, but it's not at the same level. It's not, you know, $500,000 events with a lot of publicity and tons of people watching them as far as I know. Yeah. Which honestly, I feel like is good for the game. It's a separate topic, but if esports are bringing in like tons and tons of money, that doesn't seem like such a terrible thing for the chess world. Anyway, <laughs> mm -hmm. um, yeah, and uh, you know what you're saying. Um, there's like all these little bits and pieces. I do want to say Lee Chess Studies, though, are definitely a competitor when it comes to learning material. I mean, Lee Chess Studies are a competitor to like chess base. <laughs> so <laughs> it's like they're definitely um, very useful. Yeah. And chess.com is working on libraries, which causes it to become a competitor with chess base yeah. right. as well at this point. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And I mean, we could ask, you know, what's the future of chess base, which has been like longstanding, huge company in the chess world, but it's facing competition from Lee chess and chess.com, which both are sort of, you know, fairly agile organizations with a lot of energy. Yeah. Innovation. Chess base is a really interesting one. Cause they have, I mean, they have their own like play zone and like uh, content library store. Uh, obviously like the software is a huge thing. And um, and then they have their their site. Um, I imagine they're still doing well. I, I imagine Chessbase kind of dominates like uh, a lot of Europe, and I feel like they're they're pretty popular here uh, in the U.S. as well. Yeah. Um, but I don't know it would be interesting um, to me. I mean, I, I grew up on Chessbase, so yeah, it would be very strange to see them <laughs> to see them go away. Yeah, um, it would be strange. I mean, since I'm saying a million things that could only make people not like me today, I'll just throw in my two cents on chess base. It was always weird that you had to like buy back your own games from them and that they're selling like professional chess players games 
to chess to professional chess players it's always the, the mega database ne never sat well with me <laughs> yeah yeah i mean there was you know games are annotated uh some of them i don't know it's a lot of work to compile all those games sure but <laughs> not good enough um yeah. but uh well, yeah, so let's, so Jesse, unfortunately, couldn't be here today, but he was very excited. He tweeted about it. There was only yeah. one thing on his mind. He wants to stream Chessable. Right. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so for him, this is a very exciting day. <laughs> this yes. has been a real struggle for him. It has. Yeah. And it occurred to me, too. I mean, it wasn't the only thing on my brain, but it occurred to me, too. You know, and, and, and leading up to this already, it's not like today was the first time I thought of it, but leading up to this today, as you guys had been, like, looking into some some ways to use chessable on stream or not and jesse had gone back and forth about it and we you know we've had some private talks about chessable various kinds and throughout all that time i was like well just hang in there jesse and ghost <laughs> yeah <laughs> right right um yeah so that's that's definitely a plus for for us we're we're excited um about that um, there's also the question whether these sites are um, going to be basically uh, killed off, like especially Chess24, because they have a lot of the same uh, stuff that uh, Chess.com does. Mm -hmm. And their content could easily just be like migrated into uh, uh, Chess.com or maybe not, actually, because they their videos are different. It's not like you have a picture of a board and a webcam. You you just have the webcam. And then the board that you see on, on the Chess24 side is like like a virtual board. Like you would like see a PGN it. player or? Yeah, basically like a player. Exactly. You can kind of like go through it. So it's not like just a video that you could download and then upload to, to a new place. So I don't know. That might be a little bit uh, tricky to manage. I'm sure they'll figure out some way. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, that would be a, a real shame if we suddenly like... Um, lose like all the great like chess 24 people like all the commentators but i feel like that's not gonna happen there's still gonna be a huge need for commentators and right uh, now i don't see a slowing in the need for commentators in the chess world so yeah. i don't think that like masses of them are going to be unemployed i do think <laughs> there's one there's one thing that i would put on the chopping block which is the i formerly you know carlson tour but uh, the champions chess tour. Yeah. I think for that thing, they're doing like, I don't know. They're doing too many broadcasts at once for that thing. And, and there that's going to have to get cut down a bit. Right. Cause they've got, I don't know. Maybe, maybe they've already cut it down from the first season, but the first season they were doing like 15 broadcasts. Well, they've um, got like the or one event, like the main one, like the, well, I think they had like three in English and then 12 other languages, something like that. Right. Then they have all the different languages. But yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, they're, they're just and it, it's a good example of the main problem with Play Magnus and the main reason that this acquisition happened, uh, which is just that Chess 24 slash Play Magnus, their style was always to spend too much money from a business perspective. Right. They're just burning and burning and burning on um, and. I mean, that's the opposite of how chess.com has done business and there's no way. I don't think that that would continue. At that level. Right. So that's like the big question for me, because it's like, okay, the, the idea of this monopoly is uh, not very pleasant, but it's like, yeah. What exactly like was the alternative here? If this just didn't happen, because it sounds like just these yeah. companies are just running out of money, essentially, and they can't just keep investing in yeah. all these price. I, 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 I saw you. I saw you arguing, as it turns out, completely correctly on Twitter. Oh, thank you. I, yeah, <laughs> I feel like an argument. I it was generally kind of asking questions like what, what what else was supposed to happen here? I guess. Yeah. Was what I was wondering. Yeah. And you I mean, and and uh, the person you were discussing with said, well, maybe there's like an option where, you know, their company continues on on its own feet for, you know, and just continues. Right. But I really think it was, I mean, not not the way it was. Right. 
And let me put it this way too. If chess.com doesn't change the way they do things, I would say it would be a bad idea to purchase the company. It's just like losing money, right? Like the company's worth negative money the way it's currently being run. Um, you know, at the height of the Queen's Gambit, I considered buying stock in this company, Costia, mm -hmm. right? It went mm -hmm. it went IPO. Right. Exciting. You know, we're all excited about Beth Harmon and now we could buy stocks in Magnus. I mean, I, I considered it. Did you ever consider it? No, I, I didn't. I don't know. No. I'm not sure why, but okay. somehow never never occurred to me. <laughs> okay. Well, it occurred to me. I was like, huh, chess seems to be doing great. I wonder if I like bought some stock and play Magnus. Like that might be like a great idea. I've actually, I don't think I've ever bought a stock in my life. So it was the first time the idea occurred to me, I guess. But I was like, hmm, I've got some insider knowledge on chess that was not like, you know, insider trading, but just like, seems like there's a chess boom, you know? <laughs> so so, um, so I thought of it and then, you know, I looked at their financials, right? And it's like, they're losing money. The Queen's Gambit is the number one show in the world and they're losing money. And it's like, uh oh. Well, not everybody, right? Apparently, Chessable is doing well. There, um, there may be divisions that are doing better or worse, and that's what Chess.com has to, you know, discern, right? But overall, like, if Chess.com just bought it as it is and like kept running it as it is, it would just drag Chess.com down as well, right? Um, but I think you were right in the argument saying, like, basically, I mean, they were. They would, yeah, you like if chess.com fired some employees, that was this person's concern, right? Some employees mm -hmm. are probably going to get fired. That's what happens when you get mergers and acquisitions in general. Some people are going to get fired. And you said, well, I mean, those people were going to be out of a job anyway at some point. And I think you were right. Um, you know, it could have been three months down the road or six months down the road, but, uh, you know, obviously the, yeah, I mean, what what is there to say? You know, it's just losing money, so it's not it's not going to go on forever. Yeah. Um. Right, and so yeah, it is curious what exactly is, is going to stick around. I mean, for the most part, it seems like when Play Magnus has been buying all these companies, they've kind of let them run as is. Like Chessable does its own thing, Chess Twenty Four, mm -hmm. um, you know, New and Chess, and and so on. Um. So I feel like, yeah, especially for like a lot of the really specialized ones, like new in chess, I can't imagine that's going to like go away. Like chess.com is just going to, I don't know, do away with it. It would just be very surprising. Um, and I think, I feel like chessable also, it's like, feels like that's a great site and people really like chessable. They have like this um, community attached to it. So it seems very unlikely that anything is going to happen to, uh, to chessable that will, um, you know, cause it to uh to kind of lose its um its personality um but uh yeah the other stuff i i have uh i have no idea yeah i'll say this Kostya. the most valuable property within the group in my opinion would be chessable and i would expect that is uh, a valuable acquisition for chess.com that that piece of the of the puzzle or the group right um, Charlotte Chess Center, howdy. Nice to have you here. Good to see you. Um, makes the point that, um, you know, it's very common in tech companies to lose money for a while and often like for a long time, you know, in order to gain users and eventually come up with a monetization strategy once you're, you're gigantic. Sure. Um, but, uh, you know, Play Magnus Group is eight and a half years old now or you know, play Magnus, the company's eight and a half years old. I think Chess 24 might be older than them, right? Like they bought Chess 24, but how old is Chess 24? Yeah, it, it definitely, I thought- That's an important question. Let me were, look that up uh, real Yeah, quick. a younger company than, than Chess 24. Because um, it was surprising when that happened. Actually, it was just as surprising as this. I remember thinking like, wow, okay, I, 2014 I as well, sorry. I can't believe it. 2014 as well. Oh, so they, they started up around the same time. Yeah. But anyway- um, you, let's face you know, the truth. You're not looking at play you're not looking at eventual so numbers like some tech companies that are eventually going to have five billion users or you know three billion users, right? So, 
there isn't the same like eventual crazy payoff just by racking up users. Um, so you don't quite have the same path that something like, you know, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Airbnb, like those kind of things have where it's like the market is the whole world, right? Um, I think after eight years of just losing money and losing money and losing money, um, you know, the prognosis doesn't look, doesn't look that good. It's not just that this is, you know, a normal strategy for a tech company, but there's, it's not really viable. Right. Well, um, so good things, Magnus coming to chess.com. Yeah, uh, that's exciting. Um, though, yeah, now it is kind of funny that Magnus has like given up his world championship uh, title and like his company, so he's <laughs> given away a lot of stuff uh, this uh, this year. Yeah, um, I think they should just rename it back to the Chess.com World Championship and then have him play it because <laughs> <laughs> people are saying now, that, like you know, it's like since Magnus is kind of has like left FIDE, so to speak, and not really caring about their title anymore. Mm -hmm. um, now, uh, FIDE has become a competitor for, <laughs> for Just.com. They might now be kind of fighting for, uh, for some space, which is uh, which is quite fascinating. Um, yeah. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, this like culture war between like the OTB chess world and the online chess world, I think has been kind of brewing for uh, for a while. Yeah. Yeah, it'll and it and it'll continue. Um I'll say a couple of things that I don't think this is for Magnus that I see both in the comments here and that I've seen on comments online today. I don't think this is selling out or him trying to make like money off of this transaction. Um because my understanding is that although the chess.com offer is, you know, 25 ish 25 to 30 percent above the current market value mm -hmm. of play magnus or market cap or current stock price although it's like 25 to 30 percent above that their stock is somewhere around like one third of it where it was so magnus and anybody else invested in the group up to this point they're not making like it's not like they're selling out or trying to make some amazing amount of money. I think any investors involved are losing money compared to what they initially put into that company. And that company's had a lot of investment. So I don't think that people on that side are trying to make money. I think they're, you know, they're taking, they're taking it out. Um, their other yeah. option, I, I don't think they necessarily had to sink, but their other option would have been to like trim away like so much and, and sort of reshape themselves into a totally different beast, but with some of the same people and some of the same pieces that are working the best. But, um, and then the other thing I don't think it is, is I don't think it's another sign that Magnus is quitting chess, right? Like first the world championship. Now this, I mean, as people are saying this, like he's playing in tournaments, right? Like mm -hmm. when he quit the world championship thing and everyone was talking about, what does this mean? And Magnus quits the world championship and all that. He was literally playing a tournament that day. I was looking at his end games while other people were talking about he's quitting chess. You know, I'm like, what are you guys talking about? Instead of talking, you should just be watching his games. He's literally the greatest player of all time is playing chess right now. I mean, um, it's um, it's a reasonable fear, you know, when the best player says they're giving up their title that like, okay, they give up their title and then a year from now they're like, well, you know, maybe he stopped scheduling tournaments. <laughs> yeah, that would be, yeah, that would be. The, and as this uh, current thing was being negotiated, he was playing a tournament as well. Right. So, well, he just won. Yeah, he just won the tournament. He yeah. just won the the Cryptics Cup, and I think uh, he's playing probably in the uh, Sinkfield Cup that you'll yeah. be at in in about maybe ten days or something like that. That's um, right. He's playing Sinkfield Cup. I think he's playing Rapid and Blitz as well. Um. Yeah. So yeah, no, I mean clearly he's he's continuing, and I don't know. I mean he didn't he didn't seem that hyped in the video, but okay, it's like it's a video. It's, it's hard to be, you know, he's not like an entertainer. But he, in the announcement, you know, it seemed like he was very excited for it, based on you know the, yeah, the written statement. That's actually 
<laughs> That's actually an interesting question because I don't know exactly how to gauge that either. Like his body language and his motivations. I don't have any special insight into what makes Magnus tick, but I normally take him straight at his word. Um, except when I see that twinkle that he's joking around. Um, <laughs> yeah, he, he, like he is a massive troll, but usually he's also very, very honest about his, you know, his intentions and his goals and all that stuff. So I usually take him at his word and, you know, he says he's motivated to play chess and, you know, he's trying to hit 2,900 and he wants to play more tournaments. And I see, I see all of this as being consistent with him continuing to play. And in this short video, he did mention, you know, playing in more chess.com events like the speed chess championships as well as title Tuesday. So I know it's going to hurt Jesse's heart that, you know, Magnus is going to be playing, you know, title Tuesday instead of preparing for a world championship match. <laughs> but if, if that makes him happy and he gets to play more, I mean, I think it, I, I think it's clear that he's not stepping away from chess. Yeah. And it's right. It's not even, um, it's not even fair to say he's stepping away from like OTB chess or anything like that. Cause again, he's playing the, the Singfield cup like in a week. Um, so yeah. Uh, yeah. We'll see what this, um, what this means um, for, for him. Um, yeah. Yeah. But I agree, he didn't seem like super excited, but like how could how could or should he feel? I imagine that he has some vision for the company, right? Like he started the company, had some vision for it. He doesn't run the day-to-day -day operations. Like he's a chess player, they've got executives to do it. But I think they must check in with him all the time. I mean, if you could talk to the world champion about what you should be doing with a chess company, you'd call him up at every opportunity, right? Yeah. Probably. Yeah. Be like Magnus, <laughs> what, you know, how should we organize this, this chess tour? You know, Magnus, who should like, who would be good commentators? Who would be fun to watch? Like, I don't know. For whatever time he had outside of his own chess career to like give guidance and give direction, I'm sure they would, they would want to take it. So I'm sure he had some vision for it, which is going to be different than chess.com's vision with some overlaps, you know, right. Um. so to some extent, this kind of a purchase is sort of like, the vision or the plan for his company didn't didn't come to full fruition. You know, I don't mean to insult him or anyone else in that company by saying that, right? But somehow it hasn't gone exactly to plan. Yeah. For them. So it wouldn't make sense for him to be super upbeat, right? Um but he could still have plenty of optimism that, you know, with chess.com, there are cool things they can do together. Yeah, um, definitely. Um, no, I mean, it's like, uh, I mean, okay, I've, yeah, been a chess professional for many years. And um, I used to have a habit, very bad habit of saying yes to every job offered to me, because mm, I just yeah, felt yeah. like, you know, the work might just run out one day. So I, I have to, I have to say <laughs> yes, or if I say no, this time, they might not, they might not me. ask you next time. So they then you won't ask. have work. Yeah. It might ruin the relationship. Yeah. And, and this could yeah. be like for, for articles or videos or content, you know, whatever. Yeah. Um, cause that's, that's always been the fear. I think it's like an ancestral fear that's been passed down through generations that, um, chess players are like the equivalent of starving artists. Right. Um, and, and you mean not that you inherited it from your parents, but like you inherited it from, you know, Jesse and other GMs and IMs you met, like when you were traveling the chess world, right? That, like no, but I also, for you. I mean, I also feel like it's inherited through the, the culture. Uh, yeah, like exactly. I mean, you're you're when you say ancestral, it's coming from other chess players, not necessarily your. your no, I mean, I mean like my my uh, Soviet grandparents. <laughs> your <laughs> like, Soviet grandparents, okay. Yeah, like you know, you know, in their time, like if you're a chess player, like you're not someone that makes money or has a good living. Okay. So, so it's like, yeah, you gotta like find find a real job. Um, yeah. Very typical immigrant mindset, I think. <laughs> Lots yeah. of folks will will relate. Um, so. Yeah, I've always had this fear that the, the work will will run out. Um, so for me, it's like all this stuff that happens, it's like I'm always, um, I always feel like my bias is to think that it's not going to last. Um, and, you know, I was thinking this like years ago, like when like the U.S. championship started in uh, St. Louis and they started 
putting in like tons of money into it and then started running like all these like super high level events. Uh, I was like, wow, this is amazing. But like, yeah, how long is this going to, is this going to last really? But it's still going, right. which, which is amazing. And um, of course I never expected chess to become as big of an esport that it has, which is um, just massively increase the amount of opportunities that there are in the chess world. Yeah. Um, I feel like really I had arguments massively. about that 10 years ago when there weren't many people who believed me that it could. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I remember, I remember yeah. you guys uh, planning the first like speech as championship. <laughs> it was, yeah, it was incredible. It was, it was such a fun time. Um, so, so this is like the, the first time, like, tr I'm like trying to like be hopeful about it. I'm like, you know, it'd be great if, if we just get like, you know, tons of online events all the time, like that are super popular. And it's like, if that's what people are paying attention to, but like chess is extremely popular, then yeah, I don't have like such a huge issue for that, uh, with that. I mean, of course, I don't want to see OTB go anywhere, obviously, but um yeah, I'm happy to see the opportunities grow, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think that for... I don't think that for chess commentators, coaches, personalities, that this is going to hurt them or have too much effect on them. I guess we'll see. But we could think it through a little bit. Um, you know, I mean, I guess it means like, I don't think there's necessarily less opportunities, but maybe like chess.com wouldn't pay, wouldn't have to pay as much if there's no other competitor paying. So maybe... Maybe there would still be work, but commentators wouldn't necessarily get paid that much. Well, that's that's the monopoly fear. Yeah, that yeah, prices of everything goes up, and then yeah, people get paid less. Mm -hmm. um, we'll see. I mean, as you said, like uh, there are still other avenues, like Twitch, um, where chess players can uh, make a living. So I don't see chess.com like messaging everyone and being like hey we're cutting <laughs> we're cutting everyone's rates um right. that happens that would be a big uh that would definitely be a big sign of things going wrong right but what i'm thinking kostya is that it's possible that chess.com currently pays commentators less than chess 24 and if that were the case then even if they would continue to offer work for chess 24 by doing coverage of more events and having an expanded staff and team those people might get paid less if that's just the only offer there is now honestly i have no idea how much chess 24 uh pays i have worked for them but it wasn't like they're like oh here's your here's our regular you know regular rate for right i don't even it wasn't remember something what, you could directly it wasn't compare. like <laughs> yeah um yeah it wasn't a particularly yeah. memorable sum <laughs> Um, but, um, yeah, no, I guess it, it, yeah. it, it might be bad for commentators in the long run, or I mean, you know, chess professionals, content people. Well, so far, I, I mean, I feel like opportunities have only, have only grown. I mean, um, right. they certainly helped, uh, helped us out a lot in terms of just like promoting Dojo and just helping us get off, get off the ground. And we basically came out of nowhere, like literally from zero. Yeah. No, I mean, it's it's clear that like, if you just look at chess.com, they've provided more money to professional chess players than like any other entity, person, anything in, in, in history. Right? I mean, they're running a global championship with a million dollar prize fund right now. Multiple other events this year with $500,000 prize funds. Like, they're pumping tons of money overall. Um in the direction of chess professionals. Um, and that's been sort of an actual goal of chess.com, you know, since, since early on in inception was to, you know, treat, treat masters well. 
um, you know, with free diamonds for national masters from the beginning and, you know, trying to create, and then as chess.com started to have income and revenue to try to create, you know, work and, and income for, for professional players. Yeah. Well, that, I mean, that's really the dream. If um, there's uh, a ton of players who can make a living exclusively from, from playing, because like for the most part, it's really just been the top players, top 50, top 100 that can just play chess and, and make a living from that. Um, but now if there's going to be all these online events and people can just like regularly play in them, then um, yeah, way more opportunities just for just for being uh, a player and you can still um, earn prizes. And it definitely yeah. seems like things are moving in the direction of having um, having prizes uh across categories i mean for the most part it's just been for the top players strong players but mm -hmm. i don't see why they can't start running uh prize uh fun tournaments for just club players you know they could they could by the way another one i just did a quick like look it up title tuesday provides over five hundred thousand dollars a year to yeah title players as well right it's not it wasn't always like that but you know they they bumped it yeah. up but it started yeah. at a time when i think there wasn't really much like it Right, yeah. just like a weekly uh, prize tournament for title players. Yeah, no, it started. It started basically at a time where Eric was like, "If we've got fifty thousand dollars that we just want to like give to title players, give me some suggestions of how we can do this that would be the most like fun and exciting, like create like the best event." If we just had, if we just wanted to give away fifty thousand dollars, and Title Tuesday was one of the like ideas structures options for for doing that um you know a weekly blitz tournament with prizes it wasn't called title tuesday in the initial idea right but mm -hmm. um but that was one of the options and so the money was obviously quite a bit less then but within the budget of what chess.com had at that point to be like let's try and give away let, let's try and like put fifty thousand dollars out there and like give it to title players was you know consistent with this idea that they were trying you know it it was a big chunk of of budget for us back then no that was a serious um amount of money for the chess world like that was basically like a first or second prize like in a top top tournament yeah. essentially um so yeah no not not a small amount uh for for those times yeah uh okay so uh where should we go with this still? Okay. Um, I think another concern since we just touched on the monopoly aspect, I mean, we could discuss whether or not we think it's a monopoly in greater detail. Um, we could also tackle the question of will chess.com's prices go up? Cause we just talked about, you know, what's it going to mean for, for pay rates for professionals. Well, they did announce, didn't they, that their the membership fees are going up at some point. September 1st. Yeah. Yeah. Um, though I didn't, I didn't see the details on that. Yeah. Well, I can tell you the most important detail on it in my mind is it's the first rate hike in chess.com history. Hmm. This is the first, so a diamond membership was a hundred dollars a year in 2009 when I started working there hmm. and it's a hundred dollars today and for another week, right? And existing members have their all have their rates locked in it's only for like new members beyond this so it can also be used to sort of encourage people who are on the fence to to lock it in now um as like a mild marketing move but um but the point is i mean like think of inflation over the last 15 years they haven't like moved their prices like this is it's it's a mild adjustment right basically they've been able to let their prices go down consistently yeah um, as they got more people using it. Um, especially uh, I feel like in the last several years, like some stuff has like doubled in price essentially, or like almost even tripled compared, depending on when, when you yeah. compare it to. Um, yeah. So yeah, the fact that I actually stayed at a hundred dollars, I think is, um, is quite nice for, you said since 2009? Or you said? Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, that's, that's, that's more than 10 years. Um, 
Yeah, that's that's quite a long time. Yeah. And I think they'd already had the diamond membership around for a year before I joined. So you're talking maybe 14 to 15 years that the price hasn't gone up, right? Yeah. So um so I think um I think so far chess.com's behavior has shown that they're not looking to jack up membership prices. Obviously this can change with changes in, you know, management and culture and, and all that kind of stuff. And once you're in a monopoly position, it's like nobody, nobody can restrain that any anymore. Um, so to the extent to which they get like incredible market power, they could move the prices they want to, but so far, they seem to be happy to keep prices fairly accessible and try and just, you know, let any, you know, make it like get the price low enough so that any chess player in the world can use it. And I think that's more the goal than to use it to jack up the price and, you know, make $15 million instead of $10 million in sales by turning some screws. Um, as long as the company is profitable, which, I mean, for the foreseeable future, it should be quite easily. Um, you know, I, I, I don't, I personally, you know, knowing a lot of the people who are involved in the company, I don't see that being a major danger that they're going to turn the screws and try and raise prices. Um, yeah. Similar with my perspective on our training program, Kostya, is like the more people we get, like we can, we can lower the price, right? So once we like hit a point where we're all sort of living sustainably, you know, our options are one, one of our big options is to reduce the price so that more people can, can, can access it. Uh, yeah, no, I was thinking we just start letting people in for free at some point. <laughs> yeah. Okay. You're on, you're on my wavelength. Good. <laughs> uh, I mean, we already have like, uh, I guess a, a mechanism for that, but, um, okay. It's only for like, you know, the, the spots have to be sponsored essentially. Um, but um, yeah, no, I, I totally get what, you, <laughs> what you're saying. Um, and yeah, knowing the chess.com people, right. It's never felt like, it seems like the goal has just always been to just make it like the best, like chess experience essentially for, for folks. Um, and, and not like, yeah. How do we extract the most possible money out of the, uh, out of the chess world? Um, yeah, I mean, they've tried to grow and they've tried to make the business profitable, but, you know, we also want our, our channel to be sustainable financially, right? We want Hokey to be able to quit his job at some point. We don't want Jesse teaching too many private lessons, right? Like we've got some goals too. They're within reason. Yeah, no, absolutely. I, I, I think that's, it's totally, it's totally fair. Um, but uh, but yeah, no one spends this much time, you know, building a chess site that uh, doesn't love the game themselves. Um, but uh, yeah, um, let's see. So, do you think do you think this was a good call for Chess.com? Do you think this will work out well for them? I think it's in some ways a risky move for them with some potentially big upside. So it's a little bit in the direction of time will tell. Um, it may seem weird to see sort of like a socialist communist leaning type of person, <laughs> like say what I'm going to say, but it kind of like depends on them ruthlessly firing in my opinion. Hmm. Um, yeah. Like I really think like, the company's losing so much money. I mean, they just have to like stem the bleeding or it, or it'll drag them down too, right? So, well, they, they can't keep, uh, right. Obviously, they can't just keep running it exactly the same way that it is. That wouldn't make any sense. Yeah. But they, just, um, they have to cut so much cost. I don't know where the cost would come from other than um, personnel, maybe some like prize funds and things. But uh, yeah, they, I mean, maybe they could like pull off like, brilliant win-win moves like maybe 
maybe Play Magnus was using some of its own money to sponsor their events and chess.com could find a sponsor that would sponsor it so that Magnus isn't like playing for his own money when he plays on his tour or whatever. But I feel like Play Magnus, they definitely gave the impression that they'd found sponsors for their tour. Um, yeah, they, they do have some. I, I mean, I don't remember the specifics, but yeah, it does does seem like chess.com has has done well to find sponsors um, on on their end. Um, yeah. So, I mean, yeah, my concern is just like, maybe did they pay a bit much for it. Maybe do they need to like, you know, maybe they need, do they need to like drop, drop the costs dramatically, but let's talk about the benefits for a second, maybe. Well, hold on. Um, I want to ask you something. Do you think, okay. you, well, there was that trustable announcement a little while ago that they were cutting a lot of employees. So do you think that was right. already connected with this? No. Do you think that was just totally separate? Yeah. Okay. I was wondering, I mean, it was very, wasn't that long ago. Right. But this is a little bit newer than that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so yeah, go ahead. Yeah, so that was like, you know, Chessable doing a little bit of what it needs to do. Um, but obviously, like there's a, there's, it seems like the need for cutting jobs is higher than the supply of cutting jobs. So, um. Well, I mean, yeah, if even Chessable, which is supposed to be the successful one financially, had to cut people, then yeah, yeah that, that doesn't look well for, for the other yeah. the other companies. Yeah. So should I tell you the upside? I mean, that's basically my formula for making it work out or my big question is like, will chess.com like cut the costs fast enough? Mm. And, and hope to my mind, hopefully the answer is yes, because it's like one thing, like you were discussing with people what would happen if Chessable just kept if 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 play magnets just continued and, and sank, but what if the new scenario is like chess.com sinks with it, then what if we left, you know, <laughs> that would be pretty bad. So yeah, then we all, we all hop on to Lee chess. We'd be fine. Yeah. They can, they can handle it. Yeah. Yeah. So, so anyway, <laughs> hopefully, hopefully they fire a lot. See everybody who like sees my comments is going to hate me. Thank goodness. We don't have much of a following here. Right. Uh, on our YouTube channel, <laughs> <laughs> the very thing that Andras complains about will be like our saving grace. Perhaps no one will will see this. Yeah, but... no, at this point, it's only the um the hardcore folks that are still listening. So you're good. Yeah, but like, Agnes basically... isn't gonna tune in to minute fifty and be like, "What's, <laughs> what's David saying?" But basically, I mean, they, yeah, I mean, they need to like dramatically fire people. I think I don't know. They have to cut the cost, and I'm guessing the cost is in the payroll. So I mean, I haven't like looked through the numbers. Somebody else knows better um knows better than me but um they got to cut the cost dramatically and if they do then it can be successful and what's the payoff if they do well the payoff is to my mind twofold there's two there's two crown jewels in the group and uh one is magnus and the other is chessable so um you know having magnus participate in uh in chess.com events is going to be absolutely absolutely awesome i think um I think chess events and like chess e chess as an esport and chess in general as something that people are going to commentate on and people are going to watch for entertainment, it hinges largely on star power. And that star power comes from two places, the commentary and the players. Yeah. But like any event you have, if you don't have Magnus, it's like sure right it's like it's like <laughs> what we said about the fide world championship right it's like if you no, don't have no, magnus it's like exactly you can call it whatever you want but like everybody's feeling like awkwardly sorry for you as you pretend to call it a world championship when you don't have magnus right so like when magnus stopped playing in the speed chess championships and it's like oh now like hikaru wins asterisk magnus didn't play right mm -hmm. yeah sorry <laughs> you know it's just it's just sad and i I mean, I've regretted for a long time that 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 they weren't managing to play in each other's events. You know, the the chess.com people and the play magnus people, like that should have never gotten to that to that point. It's like right. It's like it, terrible, right? But, it it felt, yeah, like a very kind of almost like a, a petty um relationship at some it point was, between it was really unfortunate. There was no there was no reason I don't think that it had to be like that. It could easily be competitors, but also, you know, participate in each other's events and you know yeah there was there was no yeah yeah, yeah. No, no need absolutely. For it. but that's i guess history now and that and that's to me that's the biggest win 
Mm. Actually, the only big win. <laughs> <laughs> the only win. I mean, like Chessable could be a win for chess.com from a business perspective, like the question you're asking me, right? But for users out there, whether Chessable is its own company or part of Play Magnus or part of chess.com, like they still can use Chessable and Chessable is right. doing great. Chessable doesn't need to be to be rescued or or housed in some particular way. Um, but Magnus needs to be playing in some of these chess.com events. And he's just in time. He can play in the global chess championship, right? Like everyone else. Uh, you know, he can get one of those 32 invited player spots. Everyone else can forget about their dreams of being the first global champion. And he better pay his $15 verification fee because Eric said everyone has to pay it. And he, he even paid it. So Magnus better have to pay it as well. $15. Or was it if $10? If he doesn't, you're going to raise a stink? <laughs> that'll, that'll, be, <laughs> that'll be the thing. No, um, what I wanted to say was, yeah, I mean, um, they kind of bought Magnus's brand essentially, and and Magnus I think is an extremely valuable person in in the chess world. Obviously, um, and this I think actually is maybe the only thing I feel like I learned in business school, which is that brands have I think more value than people often um, give them credit for. And I think Magnus's brand has has a ton of value. Um, Chessable is also a great brand, great community, but but yeah, Magnus is um, yeah I mean just easily the, the biggest name in the in the chess world. Um, and it will be amazing to to finally see, you know, the one zero death match with Hikaru. I mean, I'm just I'm already just <laughs> locked and loaded for that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, just, I you can't just wait. Try to set some kind of alert so somebody wakes you up so you don't miss it, right? <laughs> like we missed Faruja playing five hours of bullet in the middle of the night in the candidates, right? If there were a way to get an alert so you knew when <laughs> I didn't miss it. You there saw were, it. There there were alerts. Yeah, people there were um, alerts. Okay. I was people, asleep. I need my phone to Twitter. like wake me up. But yeah, you were you were in a different yeah time zone. But um, yeah, yeah, no, I saw it on Twitter and I was like, wow. Okay. Jeez. So would your phone like beep on Twitter, like if you were asleep and you would find out that Magnus and and Hikaru were playing? You've got a system ready to wake you up. No, no, no. Sleep is sleep, David. Come on, sleep is okay. uninterrupted. But okay. if it happens during the day, yeah, and I'm you know on my phone every second minute, then yeah, I'll notice it. <laughs> so, yeah. At some point. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. So the great Dan is saying if Magnus's brand has so much value, PMG would be profitable. Well, I mean, you can have something of value and still overall like outspend the thing you have a value, right? Like I could have an ice cream stand that's valuable but maybe the max it can sell in a day is, you know, $500 of ice cream. And then I pay Costi a thousand dollars to be my like celebrity marketer to stand there and like encourage people to come eat ice cream. I'm going to lose, um, I'm going to lose money and eventually go out of business. And it's not because my ice cream didn't have any value. Like there are ways to, to mess up a business situation, even if you have something of value. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I, I think you're right. That is a nice thing that we'll finally see, uh, some unity between chess.com and the Magnus group. I don't think this is exactly how people wanted it, but, um, the crossover events could be, could be special. I mean, it's gotten to the point. Yeah. Where it's like, I'm having a hard time fathoming, like, like Jan Gustafsson and Danny Wrench in the same room or on the same like video. It's uh -huh. like worlds like colliding. Like it's hard for me to imagine. That's how separate they've been. Yeah. But now that could happen. Yeah. And that would be amazing. Yeah. And Jan could appear as Danny and Dan could appear as Jan. That would be a great bit. They could. Yeah. They each have the range with the, they each have the range with the accents, you know, <laughs> and the hats. They could do it. Um, so oof. Yeah. Um so that'll be uh that'll be interesting. Yeah. Well, all right, David. I think we should uh, we should call it there. Okay. Um, big news. Oh. I don't know what's going to happen. It was very exciting this morning. I mean, it's just you know just huge news to wake up to. Yeah. Do you do you have an overall feeling, Kosti, if this is going to be good for the chess community or bad for it or not matter? Do you have a feeling on that? Woof. I feel like with these things, it's always just like it's just so hard to say until you're like. Uh, you know, five years, 10 years, 15 years down the line. Like, I, I don't know. I mean, okay. Like 
nowadays people talk about the uh, Kasparov rift as being like, oh, it was really bad for the chess world. So people can look back on it now and, and say that, or people look back on it and they say that. But honestly, at this point, I don't really, I don't spend time thinking about that, you know, yeah. as a chess player now. So I, I got to tell you, I was surprised when Jesse said that as if that were like an accepted notion. Like I always thought it was fine. I never thought it was a mm. problem and I lived through the whole thing. Um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, it's but, a very common opinion that I've heard that it, it yeah. just wasn't okay. good wasn't good for okay. the chess world so um and, and it seems like a fair position you know to take with uh, just splitting the you know into two but yeah now like uh 30 years later i guess you know it's uh yeah not exactly the thing i'm thinking about all the time like oh yeah this was you know this is the thing that's still affecting the chess world today so who knows yeah yeah i mean i think it would be good for the chess world to have a couple chess.coms instead of one that's that's my general take and it's, and and uh you know it, it when play magnus was acquiring companies i thought it was bad for the chess world i didn't hold it against them in any way it was like a logical thing for them to do to you know from a business perspective maybe to try and buy chessable or new in chess or whatever it seemed like reasonable to them but to me i thought it was bad but i think that you know since all of these chess entities are operating within a societal context of capitalism it's just normal that companies become bigger and concentrate over time right you can see it in industries other than chess it's just like a natural process it's not the the fault of somebody who's making acquisitions right they're just like if you're working at chess.com you're like oh we could like we could get magnus to join us like like i i may think it's bad like i may think it's uh, in the long run going to be bad for like the chess world but like who would ever you know say like oh yeah that's that's a bad move you wouldn't want magnus on your team <laughs> like, <laughs> right like i don't you know it's it's unfortunate it's just how it goes you know and at some point like chess.com's you know value proposition to users was better than icc's and you know people started using icc less right um i mean at the time i was excited to be improving chess.com and getting people to come use it right but then the fact is, if at some at some point one thing surpasses another thing, then the other thing often dies and you get less and less options. So I think it's unfortunate, but it's, it's not the fault of any particular person in the chess world that that's the direction things go. Yeah. ICC is still going, by the way. Shout out to uh, ICC, yeah. my first online chess club. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, mine too. I mean, I love I love playing on it. I got a lot out of ICC. Yeah. Yeah. Um but I I mean are are they like they're not like serious, I don't know. You wouldn't mention them as a competitor anymore, would you really? No, I don't I mean, I don't think of them as such just because I I just don't um think about them very much. Like I don't uh hear of them but um uh yeah because i remember yeah the shift very clearly when um people started switching over because at one point icc was extremely dominant and not that many people were playing on chess.com and then they just started doing more and more stuff and um people slowly slowly switched over um and so yeah and then it just felt like icc is just uh, you know uh, old history old news yeah at this point, it feels like it'd be hard for an entity to compete with chess.com across all the different services that chess.com offers at this point, right? For someone yeah. to like have something that like competes on like playing and studying and socializing with other chess players and, you know, watching entertainment and, you know, having access to teaching materials and stuff. It seems like really hard, but what you can still have is sort of competition on one single product, right? Like the way Chessable was originally like a single product company, right? They didn't have to compete with chess.com and, and, and chess 24 across the board. Just they did one thing, right? Or you yeah, got a site that just more, does like tactics, right? Or yeah, they kind of compete with like chess books and uh, maybe like chess book apps. Yeah. So that, that can still happen, right? You can have something that competes with chess.com just on the playing experience, Lee Chess, right? You can have something that competes with chess.com on 
you know, maybe some, some form of like training or teaching, right? Like our training program in a certain sense, not exactly competes, but like mildly competes with other offers of chess instruction or training options. We are a uh, very big fish. <laughs> Um, I do think Lee Chess is, is still a serious competitor. I think Lee Chess is going to be around for for a while. Um, yeah. And I, I, I think that's a great thing. I mean, I think the, the site it just like provides uh, incredible service for folks. Um, yeah. So Lee Chess, I think, isn't going anywhere, uh, yeah. which is good. It should be should be free to play chess online. Like, just... <laughs> Should be free. Maybe healthcare <laughs> first, Kostya, and then and then you can get on the soapbox about everybody deserves <laughs> free chess on the internet. Oh, I'm sorry, that's that's too much. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I just, think it's doable. Yeah, I think chess. I think Lee Chess will stay the same. Uh, I mean, to some extent. I mean, I it, it'll stay there. It's not going to die off. It provides a good enough, uh, a good enough service that it can compete on forever. I think. And it's found a sustainable way to to provide that at you know basically no cost, right? So they'll be there, they'll be there, and that's and that's good. Um, will Lee Chess will Chess.com stop Magnus from playing on Lee Chess? I don't think so. I mean, what what could they do exactly? <laughs> what could they like? I, what could they threaten him with? I mean not paying him to compete in their events or something like that. I mean, they, they use exclusivity on other people, right? Kostya. No, for sure. But I mean, uh, if I, I would imagine Magnus can kind of do whatever he would like ultimately in, in the chess world. Yeah. I mean, they, I think they've like prevented Hikaru from playing on Lee chess sometimes. And he's pretty, pretty big, pretty, pretty independent. I don't know if they guy. prevented him. I mean, he he's played on Lee Chess a couple times, and it sounds like they they got angry about uh, at him a couple times. But I mean, he still did it, and they still you know have a very good relationship. Yeah, so. yeah. I don't know the details of those conversations, but I feel like it feels like he may plus play less on Lee Chess than he would want to because of the deal he has with Chess.com, and Chess.com is able to offer him enough that he's willing not to do it. So. Similarly, chess.com could try to offer Magnus enough for him not to play on Lee Chess, right? We'll pay you this much to not play there. But I I personally feel like Magnus cares about money maybe less than Hikaru and has enough. And I, I, I just think he's somebody who just sort of does what he wants and doesn't care and, and doesn't let other people's Doesn't let other people control him at all, I guess, really, right? Doesn't let their, them change what he does. No, I mean, in the chess world, I mean, there's like no one that Magnus needs more than people need Magnus. So, I mean, ultimately, like he's, as, I mean, as long as he's like, you know, number one player in the world, I think he he's always going to have this uh, kind of leverage. Um, yeah. But, uh yeah, uh, crazy times. Definitely not something I expected. I'll say that much. Yeah, yeah. It feels like this was a was a big surprise to most of the chess community. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. No, I don't think anyone um, anyone was was calling. <laughs> this is gonna happen. Stop.